Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. An update 1.4 has just arrived on the Russian server, and so I went on the What Replays website to see what possibly the most exciting thing about 1.4 brings, and that is that the scouting capacity of the new Tier 10 French wheeled light tank, the EBR 105. Now, this patch will most likely hit the European server tomorrow and the North American server, although I'm not sure if the news has quite gone up on the homepage yet, but I'd be very surprised if it doesn't, because Wargaming would be breaking an age-old tradition of, of course, um, EU and NA usually getting the patch the day after. Now, 1.4. French wheeled light tanks. Obviously, Riddick here has been saving up his free experience on the Russian server and has managed to unlock this vehicle on day one. And I'm very happy that Riddick has actually saved all that free experience and unlocked this tank because we get to see how it performs immediately. So you can go and try and make better informed decisions about tomorrow, about why would you want to get this tank? Now, the French wheeled light tanks, or French wheeled vehicles, if you want to call them tanks, are they a tank because they don't have tracks, yeah, it's up, up to you. I'm going to be calling them tanks just for, for the sake of it, for, for ease, and because obviously I'm going to probably mess up the words all the time if I try and call them vehicles instead, just like I do with self-propelled guns, right? Now these little tanks are vastly faster than the other light tanks currently in the game and apparently the wheels also allow them to do more crazy stuff even the tiniest of little bumps you manage to get fat air with them the loot is crystally quick and this is the fastest tank in the game now limited to 95 kilometers an hour when going forwards inside the the travel mode or or the speed mode whatever you want to be calling it now, obviously, it has been nerfed already before it, it left the test server. The first time the EBR-105 went onto the test server, it could drive around at 105 kilometers an hour. It was frankly ridiculous. It was, it was too quick. I think now that they've changed it down 10 kilometers an hour, it still feels very, 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 very quick, but it's just not quite so ludicrous. Think about it like this. Um, Think about the difference between shooting something that's going at 40 and something that's going at 50 in World of Tanks. 40, a fairly easy shot, right? What kind of vehicles are going to be going at 40? Well, for me, that feels like it's going to be a fast heavy or, or a slower medium. Something like the old FV4202 at Tier 10 before it was changed. Something going at 50, however, that's more like a T62A. Now, it's a lot easier to hit something going at 40 than 50. And the same thing can be said now that the top speed limit has frankly been increased from 75 kilometers an hour, which was on the Rheinmetall uh, Panzerwagen, but then again, that wasn't really doing much for the tank, considering I just featured it on this channel as possibly one of the worst vehicles or the worst tier 10 tank. But upping it up to 95 while keeping at least a fairly low profile on this vehicle means that this thing is just tricky to hit, which means it can get right up underneath the noses of its opponents just like Riddick is doing here. And when you can get up underneath uh, the noses of your opponents while remaining alive, then you can manage to light them up in positions that they usually would stay safe in. Now, if Riddick hadn't plowed his way through the center of the map here with the great top speed limit of this tank, all of the tank destroyers that you'd be sitting around here would just be sitting there very safely in the bushes that have nice long range shots, and eventually maybe the heavies would push through here, then Riddick's team would fire at them, then they would get lit up when they actually fire because their camera rating would drop down, and then the tank destroyers would get easy shots from the back. However, now with vehicles like this bombing it around, and did we also notice how much Riddick was spotting the the, the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen on the enemy team. Look at that. Riddick did pretty much 1,500 spotting. The, the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen is probably down to, yeah, very low amount of hit points, as you can see on the left, at 112. And so that makes these things just absolutely wild. Now, sure, light tanks should be able to outspot these at long ranges because these vehicles, they can't use binoculars, and this tank has a view range of 350. Yeah, that, that's very mediocre. And that's the best of any of the French wheeled light tanks. 350 and the fact that you can't actually use binoculars on this tank means that even when it's fully, fully, fully upgraded, you can get to about 450, maybe 460 meters view range. And that's including things like bonded equipment, right? The, you know, the improved equipment, the stuff that you can only get for investing a huge amount of time playing ranked battles or, in, or being heavily invested inside clan wars. And so that means that these things, they can't really spot stealthy vehicles at long range, unlike uh, a vehicle with binoculars or a fully upgraded light tank would be able to, a standard light tank. But considering their camo and their speed, they can spot tanks with very bad camo. 
and incredibly long ranges. When vehicles like a, a Mouse or an FV405 have got about 3% camo, then it doesn't matter if you've only got 460 meters view range, you're still going to be seeing them at the max spotting distance of 445. However, these vehicles very much more struggle against vehicles with 40% camo, like some stationary tank destroyers. Or when tanks start to get 50% camo, like a tank destroyer using a, a camo net, something like a Stritzfang 103B, this vehicle has pretty much no hope of being able to spot it unless it gets to within about 240 meters of the target. And so, the EBR 105, it's, it's, it's this kind of new... It is the best active scout in the game now. Uh, there, there's no better active scout. There are better passive scouts. I'd probably rather play a, a tier 10 light tank and rush into a bush and then sit there either with coated optics or even if you're bold, use binoculars. But to be honest, regular light tanks have got high enough view range to be able to get into the bush anyway, so you can make do with using coated optics and you wouldn't have to use binoculars. And so, the new best active scout in the game the EPR 105 well actually that's not that's not uh, just wait just wait you, you you decide from from this game and you also decide from from the next game there's gonna be a double helping of gameplay today from the Russian server and yeah you, you, the, the next map is going to be Prokhorovka which in theory is the the best scout map in the game so are we gonna be able to do something wild on that well we're gonna have to wait and see the thing that's absolutely crazy about this tank, however, is just how fast it can manage to, to change flanks on a battlefield. Other tanks would probably just go AFK. If they'd managed to get into that position, they finished off the batch out. They're probably thinking, my job is done. Maybe they'd go and sit in the, the cap circle and be able to uh, just farm a few cap points in there, if, if that's your kind of thing. But the EPR, it's already across, and it's the first into combat against the mouse. Although it doesn't really have the penetration, as we can see here, to be able to go through it, even when it's got flush at the back, only penetrating one out of two. So if you haven't watched my my review of this vehicle when it was playing the test server, you might not know about the gun ca characteristics of the EBR 105. Well, as the name would suggest, it's got 105mm. Now, the standard rounds on this tank, while they deal 390 damage, have only got 190mm of penetration. Yeah, that's pretty much got about a third less penetration than any other medium tank. And it's probably losing about 25 of the penetration, or 25% of the penetration, that a light tank would use. On the other hand, if high explosive rounds are more your thing, then you can dab the 3 key, and then you have 105 millimeters of penetration. That's fantastic for a high explosive gun. And 500 alpha damage? There are incredible high explosive rounds on this tank, and I expect we're going to be seeing a lot of people pack a good amount of them, just like Riddick was. But Riddick was the previous game. Now we have got the pleasure of watching... I, th I think his name translates into Lyricist on the enemy team. So that's what I'm going to be calling him through this replay. So Lyricist has managed to spawn on Prokhorovka. Prokhorovka, the best light tank map in the game, let's be honest. This whole mid-ridge in the, the center, though, usually only used at low tiers. I, I really feel that towards the, the upper tiers, people have got enough view range to spot you constantly when you manage to make a peek on it, and it's quite a risky play to make. Usually we'll see light tanks battling it out down the west for vision, or alternatively, very seldomly, we'll see some light tanks trying to plow it up on the hill. Now look at this, the Sheridan immediately gets spotted by Lyricist, and that tier 10 light tank has lost a thousand hit points right at the beginning of this game. A lot like what the Rheimatal Borsig, uh, sorry, not the Rheimatal Borsig Waffenträger, that wasn't what we were playing, the, the, the Rheimatal Panzerwagen on the enemy team on the previous replay. Now, is this what's going to be happening constantly? Well, maybe at first. We're probably going to see these French wheeled light tanks doing crazy things against regular light tanks immediately. But then what I think is that a, a skilled light tank player is going to adapt. Now, how would a skilled light tank player adapt, you might be asking. Well, it's as I mentioned in the previous replay, using the fact that you have much better view range at long range. And while the EBR does have better camera rating, probably by about 5 or 10%, you've got way more than 5 or 10% view range advantage over the vehicle. And so what you're probably going to want to do in a light tank now against a tank like this is not make a suicide rush for the best bush in the game, which will be this one situated right up here. It's probably going to be to fall back to a second bush and just kind of dip your toe into the bath before you jump all in. Because, yeah, yeah, if the, light, if the French wheeled light tank 
is there, um, because it's going to be fast, it's probably going to get there before you're going to be able to, then you're going to lose a tremendous amount of hit points. And once you've lost those hit points, then whether you can manage to play the, the more active scout role on the mid ridge like the Sheridan is, then all it takes is one artillery shell landing anywhere near him and he's going to be out of it. And so you're probably not, want to, not going to want to rush for the super aggressive bush. What you're going to want to do is play that mid bush, just try and spot out from there, maybe wait for the French wheeled vehicle to make a mistake or even take some shots at it long range. These things, while they're quite hard to hit, bombing it around at about 90 kilometers an hour right now, oof, there they go, the Sheridan just whizzing over the top of the vehicle. They're not that hard to hit from the side. Look at the, the side profile of the EBR. You will be able to overmatch pretty much all of the armor of this vehicle because it only has 40 millimeters on the front of the hull. The whole of the turret you will overmatch. The whole of the side of the hull you will overmatch. And you're pretty much going to overmatch most of the front of the hull as well. Oh, nice shot there. Good stuff by Lyricist to shut down the Sheridan. And that's got to be a good feeling. You know when you're playing in a tier 10 light tank and you shut down the light tank, the only light tank on the enemy team, and there are no medium tanks for some reason, you, you have got possibly the golden opportunity. And Lyricist is going to jump straight into it. I guess now that he knows that the enemy's vision is weak, he's going to go right in. Oh, wow, I didn't think about the T-62A, actually. The T-62A is firing high explosive rounds. And look at this. Left, right, left, right. Beautiful wiggling here. Such a hard tank to be able to hit when it's driving like this. Even the 268 version 4 unable to get it. And look at that. Straight in. That was a 1,000... 500 spotting on the T-62A. 500 to a th like 800 on the Gorilla. Wild stuff here. And it just is going to just bring in a whole new age of active scouting into the game. Now, sure, you're seeing two of probably the better light tank maps here, but still vulnerable, right? The 268 version 4 putting in 600 damage there. And when you only start with 1,300 hit points, you're, you're not going to be able to take too many before you're sent back to the garage. So will these French wheeled light tanks bring a whole new age of active scouting into the game? Well, maybe on a map like this. It's another great shot. Awesome stuff, Lyricist there, shutting down the griller on the enemy team. But that's one of the things that this vehicle does have going for it, and that is an enhanced auto-aim feature. Now, what does the enhanced auto-aim feature do? Well, that means that you don't actually have to click, right-click, that is, right on the enemy vehicle. You can click just roughly around it, and then your vehicle's going to auto-aim. But there's one thing that I'd like to clarify, and that is that the auto-aim feature does not give lead. And so unless the vehicle is completely stationary, then it's going to be a very bad idea to be using it to firing it, fire it at moving targets. Because that's what an aimbot does. An aimbot gives lead depending on how fast the vehicle is moving, which is something that you should be able to do naturally in World of Tanks, right? Because if you use an aimbot, then you're probably going to get detected and you're going to be banned and don't come crying to anyone about it because you deserve to be because you're a filthy cheater. So... While this vehicle does have an enhanced auto-aiming feature, it's, it doesn't provide you with that much of an advantage. I think Wargaming have basically loosened what you have to do because, frankly, you're driving around at such an alarming rate that it's incredibly challenging to actually mouse over the enemy vehicle um, perfectly. All right, unfortunately, Lyricist is unable to get out the Amex 50B from the enemy team, but you know what? It's starting to look like it's good news here. 8,500 spotting, 589 damage. Lyricist is just tearing up this map on Prokhorovka, literally, by driving around at 95. He cut through the western flank, allowed his tank destroyers to break through there, and he's still just doing that active scouting role, lighting up as much as he possibly can. Now with the artillery under pressure and shut down in this game, I guess Lyricist is thinking, can he manage to get his spotting total over 10,000? Considering this is the first day that this vehicle has been out, this is an impressive feat. Now, sure, I've managed to do things like this with my T100LT. I've managed to do it with other light tanks as well. I think the, the largest amount of spotting I ever did was actually in a Type 62 on Malinovka, which was about 13k, I think. But that was basically passive scouting in a bush. But this, is, this has been anything but passive scouting. This is not how I usually see most of the large games in a light tank on Prokhorovka. Most of the large light tank games on Prokhorovka are frankly just going and sitting in the bush location at E1 or F1 and waiting for your team to be able to obliterate your opponents. Lyricist on the other hand has shown that that's not how you have to scout in World of Tanks anymore. You can manage to, to be active. You can race at the enemy team and you better unless they've got pinpoint marksmanship then you're most likely going to be able to get away with it as well and uh, so i don't know whether this is going to be a good new age of active scouting back to what the t52 used to be able to do obviously 
you know, tank destroyers, beware artillery, beware lumbering vehicles that want to sit at long range and try and use your, your stealthy mechanics, it's going to be a, a bad time for you. But on the other hand, vision is something that a lot of World of Tanks players are always complaining about. Pinging the map, how many times have you been pinged in your medium tanks or your light tanks, told to go and scout? While nobody wants to be spotted by a vehicle like this, probably everybody wants to have an active scout playing as well as Lyricist was here on their team, because with plays like this, you can undoubtedly have a profound impact on the game's outcome. So a scout medal and a patrol duty for Riddick here. How much spotting was that exactly? Yep, 10,390 and 4,000 damage as well. And with what looks like no heat rounds fired, although premium consumables resupplied at full price, oh, got to pre-purchase those, Riddick. It was still a decent profit. Next up, we had Lyricist, who gets a scout medal and a patrol duty, just like Riddick did. And once again, 11,334 spotting, but not nearly as much damage this time. And to put that into perspective, that's about four to five five entire enemy tanks, a third of the enemy team vanquished with the vision of the EBR. And again, not too many premium rounds fired, and so a 67,000 credits profit round. Now one thing I must highlight, and this is a very recent development in the last week or two, is that the French wheeled light tanks have actually lost their boost mode. So that rather fun feature that you all got to see me playing around with while I had a rental of the premium tank is no longer in the game. And Wargaming are justifying removing it because they say it was too tricky to be able to use, it was wasn't really being giving you know, giving an advantage to the uh, the wheeled light tank player, but really, it, it, in my opinion, the reason why they removed it is probably because it just looked a little ridiculous, and also, secondly, it allowed people to get into some positions that they probably don't want them to be able to get into, and wargaming probably don't want to have to keep changing maps for the rest of their development time. Nevertheless, even with the loss of the boost mode, the Panar EBR 105 is is definitely looking like the best active scout in the game, and I'm going to be very interested to see what the average win ratio of these tanks are going to be across the servers and also whether this tank is now going to dethrone the T100 LT as just the best all-round scout in the game not just the best active scout Anyway, ladies and gents, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, give the video a thumbs up, but if you hated it, give it a thumbs down and let me know in the comments whether you're looking forward to the Panar EBR 105 tomorrow. If you saved up your free experience, you're going to try and rush to be able to get it. Or alternatively, are you really hating the look of these things and you, you kind of don't want 1.4 to even happen tomorrow? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.